So hi everyone and welcome to this video on an example of first degree price discrimination or perfect price discrimination. So uh, we're going to start with our calculus analysis and try to derive out how a uh, first degree price discrimination compares to a pure monopoly and subsequently to a perfectly competitive market. So we're going to use the same function or the same monopolist we had in our pure monopoly example. And if you recall, that monopolist faces a market demand function of P is equal to 400 minus 20Q. And it has a cost function equal to this, right? So um, uh, we ask first the question no? uh, that how much uh, total output should the monopolist produce, okay, if it can perfectly discriminate? So if it can perfectly discriminate, it means that it knows exactly the maximum willingness to pay of each consumer and it can reap that consumer surplus of each uh, consumer that's out there. So um, uh, we start it if the firm, okay, so if the firm can do, okay, can do first degree price discrimination, okay, so if the firm can do first degree price discrimination, uh, discrimination, then the optimal, okay, the optimal output, total output, put, uh, chosen satisfies the FOC of P is equal to MC. Now, this differs from a pure monopoly, which is MR is equal to MC, and it's because uh, the, the monopolist can know okay, can know exactly the maximum willingness to pay of a consumer and it can charge the last consumer exactly equal to the marginal cost rather than not being able to reap revenue from that consumer if it had done with an optimization procedure wherein MR was equal to MC. But since it knows that consumer's maximum willingness to pay, it could adjust that and perform this price discrimination. So uh, if you recall, okay, so uh, MC... Okay, is equal to the derivative of your cost function with respect to Q. And uh, that's capital Q. And what you'll know that that's uh, 40Q. So that's going to be your marginal cost. Therefore, you just equate your price and your marginal cost. So your price is equal to 400 minus 20Q is equal to 40Q. And what's going to happen is it's going to be 400 equal to uh, 60Q, divide both sides by 60, 60, you get Q star is equal to 6.67. Okay, therefore, okay, uh, in order to uh, be able to maximize its profit, it should produce okay, uh, Q equal to 6.67. Okay, so that's what its production will be. And you'll note that that production is significantly greater than if it were a pure monopoly. Again, because it can price towards equal something equal to marginal cost rather than MR is equal to MC and reap the additional consumer surplus and prevent the deadweight loss. Okay, so next question. What's the maximum profit that the monopolist can theoretically get? Should it perfectly discriminate? Okay, so by definition, okay, so by definition, okay, the total profit profit of a monopolist uh, that practices okay that practices first degree price discrimination is equal to um, this formula so you get profit is equal to that's your revenue minus cost and essentially you're getting the integral from Q equal to zero until Q is equal to our Q star earlier of uh, your demand, okay, Q, minus the cost function if you evaluate Q star. So if you notice, uh, we had this towards the last video. Essentially, we are getting this area here, okay, that entire area there. That is the area that we are getting because that's the total potential profit that the monopolist could get. Uh, should it be able to perfectly discriminate? So that's what this integral is. Okay, so 
uh, if we evaluate this, uh, so let's start first with the revenue part. The revenue part is uh, this part here. So this is the revenue part. So revenue is the integral from uh, uh, zero until 6.67, okay, of uh, 400 minus 20Q dQ, right? Because this is our demand function. Then uh, we're going to evaluate it now. So this is going to be equal to uh, 400Q minus uh, 10 Q squared. So if you evaluate it using rules of integration, then you're going to evaluate this from zero until 6.67. Then uh, if you do that, you're going to get 400 times 6.67 minus 10 times 6.67 squared minus everything. Uh, this is going to be zero. And you're going to end up with 2,223.11. Uh, then your cost part is, uh, this is going to be, that's 20Q squared plus 500. So this was your cost function. Just plug in Q. So you get 20 times 6.67 squared plus 500. And you get 1,389.78. Then to get the profit, that's just revenue minus cost. That's equal to 2,223.11 minus 1,389.78, and you're going to be left with 833.33. And what you'll notice is this, uh, this profit of 833.33, uh, this is uh, greater, okay, this is greater than the profit of a pure monopoly, which is equal to 500, which we uh, derived in the last video. If it chooses to charge that one single price wherein MR is equal to MC. So we can see that the profit of the monopolist is certainly larger when it is able to practice first degree price discrimination. And that's an example uh, of first degree price discrimination using calculus. So I'll see you in the next video as we discuss second degree price discrimination. Thank you for your attention.